remember to turn on all notifications so you don't miss a video. Does the history of the Devil Fruits matter? How far back does the setting's history need to go? Do we need to know how all magic systems were created? How much information do we need? I've been planning on writing a video on how some stories give too much detail and end up damaging the setting in the process. The arrival of a potential Devil Fruit explanation has now pushed the script to the top of my priorities. I was on a stream with Triggered Senpai when he was criticizing the fact that One Piece waited so long to explain Devil Fruits, and my immediate reaction was, what needs to be explained? I believed that we had enough information and that more info wouldn't improve the story. So I want to take a look at a couple of stories that gave too much information and examine why I think they should have stopped at a specific point. The main issue with these histories is that they try to explain a fantastical concept instead of trusting the audience to accept the fact that said fantastical concept exists. The explanation usually makes even less sense than just leaving it as a mystery and puts cracks in my immersion and the believability of the setting. My first example is Naruto. By the end of part 1, the oldest thing that we know is that Hashirama and Madara fought. At some point in part 2, we learn of the existence of the Sage of Six Paths, who created the Tailed Beasts and had Yin and Yang style. During the war, we learn the specifics of the battle between the Senjus and Uchihas. All the information between that and the present has also been filled over time. But then the story goes further back to the Sage, now named Hakuromo, and explains his past. This history goes too far and honestly makes things worse. We learn about the origins of the Uchiha and Senju, the Sage, Ninjutsu's origin, Chakra's origin, the Tailed Beast's origin, but at what cost? Now, aliens exist in Naruto and were the origin of Chakra. That is such a jarring and appalling decision for a world of ninja. Now I'm asking where the aliens on the moon came from. Where should it have stopped? With Hashirama and Madara. I'm fine with Hagoromo revealing that Ninchu was originally created to connect people, but got weaponized as Ninjutsu. But the entire alien plot needs to go. I don't need to know where exactly Chakra came from. There is almost no explanation that would be satisfying. I don't need to know the first Senju or Uchiha. I don't need to know where the Tailed Beast came from. I'm fine with just the knowledge that they originated from the Ten Tails. I don't need to know where the Jubi came from either. Here's what I would have done. The Sage of Six Paths was the first person known to use Chakra somehow. He fought the Jubi and split it into nine Biju. He made Ninchu for connection, but people turned it into Ninjutsu. Eventually, ninja clans arose and the Senju and Uchiha were the strongest. That's it. No aliens and the rest is shrouded in mystery. My second example is in an anime, but it has a very anime-esque setting. My point of focus is the avatar. Originally, the avatar was just a mysterious, fantastical part of the setting where the avatar reincarnates through each of the four elements and has access to the memories of their past selves. Where'd they come from? Why are they the balancers? How come only they can use all the four elements? Didn't know, didn't care. I just accepted it as a part of the setting created. It didn't need to be explained for me to enjoy the story. And if they tried to explain it, it would probably be unsatisfying. Additionally, people learn to bend elements by imitating fantastical animals or the moon for waterbenders. It doesn't make sense in my world, but if that's the logic in their world, I can accept it. I don't need overexplanation. Then Korra comes along and gives too much info. The first avatar is a guy named Juan, and he gained firebending from the lion turtle touching him. What happened to learning firebending from dragons? Now I'm asking why he had the power to give firebending and if any other spears had it. As for the avatar bending multiple elements, that comes from him merging with a good deity who was fighting against a bad deity. So thanks to this unnecessary explanation of bending multiple elements, the story has now switched from a very eastern influence of lore to a western influence, with what amounts to God versus Satan. Great job. The Avatar was originally supposed to bring peace among humans and between humans and spirits, but now we have evil spirits and good spirits and a war between their respective deities. Cool. His spirit goes to other bodies when he dies, which explains the Avatar cycle, but why does it follow a pattern? Who knows? Once again, a story tries to explain its fantasy setting too much and ends up damaging what was already there. How I would have done it is exactly as the last airbender left it. My third story is Attack on Titan. The fantasy element is that the characters have these 9 titan abilities that are passed down and mindless titans exist. Like the rest, this story went too far back and explained too much. Titan started when Ymir fell into a body of water and an alien attached itself to her spine. Aliens again bro. Where'd this alien come from? You answered a question but just created another. Just like Naruto, this alien damages the immersion of the setting for me. She's the original titan but has the power to scream mindless titans into existence. 
I'm fine with that. But then her three kids ate her corpse to gain her power. A question that arises is how they gain powers without first being a titan. Eventually, it split into nine titans with powers. Now I'm asking why it stopped at nine, and why when a user dies without being eaten, it automatically goes to someone else like reincarnation. Here's what I would have done. Ymir somehow gains titan powers. When she's alive, she gives nine people specific powers. Initially, the powers are automatically reincarnated to a new person, but people learn about titans eating the user to steal their powers. This brings me to One Piece. What do we know about devil fruits? They are fruits that give superhuman abilities along with a weakness to seawater. There are three different types, and the fruits reincarnate when the current user dies. What needs to be explained? Absolutely nothing. This is a fantasy setting that Oda established, and I accept that. It's called suspension of disbelief. I don't need to know what the first fruit was. I don't need to know why there are three types, or why users are weak to seawater. I can guarantee that the answers to these questions won't be satisfying. Honestly, the only way to explain fantastical concepts well in most stories is with gods and deities. The reason I believe this is because of our real life cultures. The Greeks, Romans, Egyptians, and more explain things they couldn't understand with gods. Those gods have been a big part of history and have been integrated so much into pop culture, so any casual reader understands the concept of gods creating things in a story. I'm not going to sit here and ask, well where the gods come from? Gods are above human understanding in most mythologies and religions. So if Oda says that the gods of the sea or something created devil fruits, there's no harm done. If Naruto said some kind of Buddhist or mythological Japanese deity created chakra, I'd be fine with that. Same goes for if a Buddhist type deity created avatars or if titans were explained through a Greek or Norse type of god. As long as the deity fits with the setting, I think it's fine. Naruto and avatar shouldn't have western-like deities and AOT shouldn't have eastern-like deities. In conclusion, suspension of disbelief is something that writers shouldn't take for granted. If you explain that your setting is fantastical from the start, as long as you don't start breaking your own rules, I'm not asking many questions, so stop trying to explain everything in detail. Almost no explanation you provide will be satisfying. It most likely will either make no sense or just replace my question with new ones, and it will almost always damage the setting that was established. Another quick example is Jojo trying to explain stands with a virus that came from a meteorite. Why would you try to explain magic with science that doesn't line up with reality? If you're hellbent on explaining the origins of fantastical concepts, go with deities. Most people understand how deities work, and it leaves a lot less room for error. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, and help me revolutionize the manga industry by buying my manga and spreading the word. All important links will be in the description.